Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's video we have another service call for a two pipe fan call unit. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we have a service call for a two pipe fan call unit. We have no display on the thermostat. Right off the bat, look at this switch. Looks like somebody was messing around over here. I actually installed this actuator valve over here. So I have been here previously. I might actually have this on video, but let's see what's going on. All right, here's our thermostat. Let's see, I don't think there's any batteries in here. Mm-hmm, no batteries. We have some labels here. I'll take a picture so you guys can see clear. All right, it says we have line, L for line. We have W slash Y, and then Y slash A. And then G, oh, GL, so that's low speed fan. G medium is medium speed fan. GH is fan high speed. And then N neutral is a line voltage thermostat. L is, a, is your hot, N is your neutral. The G's are my three fan speeds. And then WY, which is actually heat slash cool. And then Y slash A. Well, I know Y is cooling A. I'm not sure what the A would be for. Right now, let's put the meter on volts AC. Let's make sure we're getting 120 volts. So right now, L, 4.8 volts AC between L and neutral, line and neutral. Uh, Chris, let's switch the switch the other way. Okay, hold on. We actually got zero volts. Switch it the other way. Now the other way up. So it was getting power, but only 4.8 volts. So the reason there's no display is because we do not have 120 volts going to the thermostat. And we need to figure out why. Okay, I'm wondering if this switch is good. And if we actually, well, and if we actually have 120 here. Gotta be careful. Here's the hot. Man, this thing is duct taped. Jeez. Whoa, <laughs> that scared me, man. All right, all right, all right. Come on. It's not a, it doesn't have electrical tape on, it has duct tape. That's already telling me there's something strange going on here, I'll tell you that much. We gotta start with that. Also, yeah, I would love to know if that switch is good. And if we're getting 120 into the unit. But at this point with this thing open, I feel like it's only right to start with this switch, man. And this switch, I don't know if it's me, but it looks kind of burnt, man. I can't, jeez, I can't tell. So. Let's see, volts AC. Volts AC. Maybe from one side to, to ground, one of them should have 120. You see, we got 120 to ground coming out. But we have 120. coming oh wow this is actually doing its thing and the crock should have zero okay this switch is actually doing its thing let's just how is it like like this on okay all right Let's let, let's let that be. We got power coming in. We got to look in here and look at the connections. Let's get into the control panel. 
I did put this tape last time because we had like air gaps here. Oh my god, this little air gas. I don't want the unit collecting dust because it was super dirty. Let's open up this control panel and see what's going on. Here's the control panel. And the first thing that I noticed is that something stinks. And look at this. Look at that, man. Crispy. We got crispy wires here, man. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is kindly turn this off. All right, and we got to make sure there's no other random power source to this because sometimes, sometimes they have two power sources because this is a two pipe fan coil unit with emergency electrical heat. We got to be real careful on that. I can see these wires here are done. All right, guys, I pulled out some wiring, just making sure my power source is coming from here. So one of the wires is here. I just wanna make sure like nothing is live. Got a break in the wire. That's probably like why we don't have 120 volts. I even melted through this wire nut. Pulling a lot of amps in here. Let's turn that on. I just wanna make sure that's the only power source that is going here. No, I got nothing here. Two volts. Turn that off. Nothing. All right, who goes here? Power's off. Oh, this just, this just came off. But that goes here. So our main line melted at this wire nut. Also, we got some, these pink wires. These are the heaters. Look at that, smoked. Okay. This feeds one wire, one side of the re relay for the emergency electrical heat. I can't tell if they're still in cooling mode with these two pipes or it's hot water. Hopefully it's hot water because we might have a problem with this heater. Maybe it might be pulling too much amps or that thing just is done. So where is this? We got one wire coming from the main into one side of the heater relay. And the other one goes to this yellow Yellow, which is probably, that's what feeds our thermostat. All right, let's cut this. Christian, let's get a, let's get my snips. Got it. The diagonal cutters, I call them snips. And I think if we revive this wire back here, we're gonna get this back online. As far as at least a display on the thermostat, but we gotta look further into these heaters. All right, let's get that out of the way. Let's cut this out. Let's get a nice fresh connection. All right. Let's connect this back. All right. There we go. Let's see what's going on. You know what? That's fine. Let's turn that on. And make sure we got 120 from that to ground. We're also gonna make sure, check these neutrals. Oh, I saw it. Keep losing the connection there, but right there, we got 120. All right. All right, I connected this back. As long as this connection is good here, we should have 120 back over there. At least you just give us a display on the thermostat. Just inspecting some of this wire. Like you can see like there's this black stuff, but it's like, if I can, I can wipe it off. What is it like dust? 
Same thing with this, nothing touching metal. Just gotta make sure that these wires are okay because we're gonna short this thing out. That might need to be a little bit cut off, this white one. Um, I think they're safe for now. Let's turn that on. And let's go back to the thermostat and make sure we got 120. Yeah, I can actually get this here. Hmm. Picked up a screw. All right, right there. Here, I have a screw for you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Line of neutral. And look at that, we got 120. Awesome. All right. Let's go there. Okay. It's not giving us room temp. Let's, let it warm up. All right. Let's keep it on off. All right. We got a display. Let me just inspect that wiring before we start any of this. But got a burnt wire, man. And we lost the connection. All right, guys. Despite a little bit of blackening on the wires, they're actually okay. Uh, it would be nice to come back here and you know like fix up all the wiring but let's just make sure like just put new wires but let's see what's going on hopefully that relay didn't you know fry or anything as far as right now let's see what happens got the meter on amps since there's two big thick wires there that's telling me that there's actually two heaters I, I'm just wondering if they're in heating or cooling mode. Let's put the system on heat. Room temp of 71. And we set it to 75. All right, nothing exploded. That's always a good sign. And check it out. We're pulling eight amps. Get rid of the light. We're pulling eight amps on one heater, which is what it should be doing. And let me check the next heater. Pulling eight amps, man. The water valve is actually closed as it should be. And this is, as far as this setup, this is telling me that we actually have chilled water going here. <laughs> Interesting, but the heat is back online, and this is a night service call. It is about 6 p.m. Let's see what's going on. Here's a supply air grill, and we have 93.2 degrees with the fan in medium speed. If we set it to low speed, we would have even better temperatures, and this is pretty much all it gets. So I can tell you right now, we have no water squeezing by for cooling and we are working directly off the electrical heater everything is good here plus I actually installed that valve so the actuator valve the valve body and the actuator so we know we're good previously I remember why I changed that it's because the water was just squeezing through the other valve so we replaced it and got them a new actuator seems like they're still in cooling mode let's go ahead and switch over to C all right so Amps turned off. As you can see here, this the cooling light is on. I labeled them before. C for cooling, H for heating. So it did switch over. Here's the valve. There's like a little thing there. And when it's loose, when that's loose, the valve is open. Okay, I'm just trying to feel for the pipes, man. I can't. It's just by hand, I want to touch the pipe. I don't feel cold air. I mean, excuse me, I don't feel a cold pipe. And I don't feel a hot pipe. But according to this, the, the auto changeover switch, or the pipe sensors, whatever you want to call them, they are doing their thing. According to that temperature, this is working accordingly. And the actuator does open. Just wondering what the chiller is set to, if it's in heating mode or if it's in cooling, but I don't feel like 
anything. All right, guys, as far as here, we got 75.6 degrees, and this just feels like room temperature. I don't feel a cold pipe supply or a hot pipe supply. So the system is operating as it should, but it's just a little strange when it's in cooling mode. It does open up the actuator valve because the pipe is, isn't hot. It's more like room temperature. So it, the unit is working, but I'm just curious as to why we don't have hot or cold water. I wonder what's going on with the chiller. It's so tight in there, but the two valves that are there, they are open. So that's not gonna be one of the reasons why we're having this issue. That is open. I wonder if there's anything in the hallway because there are some more valves that they added. Wonder if that's all open. Here's the access panel outside of the room. And look at that. Before I even went to go check the chiller, look, this is closed. Let's open that. And this is closed. They were probably trying to see if something was going on and that's their troubleshooting. All right, now that's all open. Okay, let's go check temperatures again. And won't you look at that. 54 degrees, 53.6. Why would they close that? Unbelievable, but that just goes to show you how important it is to do a thorough job. So the unit is working as it should. The actuator is opening and closing as it should in cooling. And the auto changeover switches are doing their thing when set to heating. It senses that there's a cold pipe and it redirects the voltage to energize the heat relay, which it did. And you saw we had we were pulling eight amps on each line on both heaters. So should be good to go. All right, guys, we are officially heating and cooling and we're gonna wrap it up from here. That was a beautiful thing. As far as why would that wire be burnt? And that's a good question. Well, it does have an electrical heater. We might have been pulling quite some amps. It does pull together about 16 amps, a little bit higher than that. On the tag over here, it says 16.7, but they should have been okay. It looked like it was 12 gauge wire. Hmm, I might have went with 10 gauge for the electrical heaters, but either way, they should be okay. We repaired the wires and we got them back up and running. I will just keep an eye on it, but these units are dating back to 2005. So if it's been running fine for that long, I'd say they're okay. But as far as this one, we're gonna wrap this up. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, Please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.